Welcome back to lab folks. So we'll continue on with our look at the DPOS 350P from Fernisi. Today what I want to do is complete what we can see on the oscilloscope part of it and I hope to get the function generator in there as well. And then in the next episode we'll carry on and have a look at the FRA and the uh, spectrum analyzer. I've got a signal we're going to it now. I think it's 60 megahertz and that's indeed what it says here and it's coming out of the generator at one volt peak to peak the generator is pretty accurate it's coming up here at uh, 934 millivolts that's pretty good it could be a loss in this 50 ohm terminator here so sometimes these are not perfect they have a little bit of loss in them so i would say that's seven percent nothing to worry about and i want to see if i can find a way to prove that it's taking one giga samples per second and i think i can do that normally this has sine x over x interpolation because of that, you see this nice smooth waveform no matter what resolution you look at it at. But I think there's a way to fool that. If we go back and we take a sample at the absolute maximum horizontal sweep rate that we can and still keep one gig of samples, then that should kind of fool the interpolation quite a bit. It's not going to be able to do it at that level. Here, I'll show you what I mean. If we go in here, I set this to, I think it's five microseconds, which is the lowest. So if we go try to go down lower, no, we've got 500 mega samples per second. Now if we go in there and do a single shot and then we expand this out to the maximum yeah so now we can see kind of vectors in it here. Now if you look across this if you look here you'll see the the first vector right and the, here's the first data point in a division right and if you look over here we can see that wherever you're appropriate right here and right here we can see that they are also very close to that first point and if we go look down here we see that there's another data point right there another one right there and if we look at uh, this one here so we're carrying on from that point so from there to there we do count them it's it's five so per division we get five data points now it's, it's actually just a tiny little bit less than five if it's not running at one giga samples per second it's pretty damn close to it something like 950 mega samples per second so i think that's okay uh, one thing that does bother me and then i would expect it in the scope of this price is that there's no fine adjustment for the vertical on it so that's a little bit of a failing there we can only go in full steps another thing it doesn't have is persistence so that can be a handy thing too like if you've got a, a, a signal this one's not bouncing around too much but you sometimes you get a signal and it's there's a lot of bouncing around in that signal you want to see kind of the range of the bouncing around persistence is great for that and there's other reasons for persistence too but that's the one i mainly use it for and it's only got sine x over x it doesn't have dots and it doesn't have vectors i would plead with Fernisi or the developer or whoever looks after the uh, firmware upgrades on this to think about putting that in if they could now another thing I didn't show before was saving settings so you can save settings in fact it's quite good so if we go in here to system and configuration settings we can save configuration we can read a configuration and we can set the power on configuration so let's say we say we like this configuration we're going to be using that again tomorrow but we can go in here and say put that into configuration one Right? So it's saved in there and now go to power on configuration and it's selected as configuration number one. So every time you power on, it's going to come up in configuration one or you can set configuration two, or configuration three or four or five, whatever you want. That is really nice. That's a very nice feature. I'm going to set up the uh, generator to put out a, a amplitude modulated signal here. And I want to show you how the digital phosphor can be used looking at a signal like that with a heat a temperature gradient in it they call it a temperature gradient. it's not really temperature okay here we have a modulated signal coming in the modulation frequency is one kilohertz and the frequency the carrier frequency is 10 megahertz so you want to go into function and then go into color temperature on and this then provides you with a, a color map of where the signals get very very close together and where they come apart so that can be handy for certain kinds of qualitative analysis of signals Sorry about what the camera's doing there to the light levels. Okay, let's uh, let's get out of this. Okay, so here we just have a 10 megahertz signal coming through it. So let me show you how the horizontal controls work in a little bit more detail. Now I've shown you this where you can jump in and out and just select a particular horizontal sweep rate all the way from 50 seconds up to five nanoseconds per division. But you can do it here quickly if you want. If you just want to snap back and forth to see something in detail, you might, you might have an interesting little thing happening here. You might want to look at it a little bit. That's fine, you can just do that. Or you can, you can enable the zoom mode. So get in here 
and uh, you can move the window around to where you want to see it and then you can adjust the zoom on it like that. It doesn't have any pinch control in the zoom mode but I don't find pinch control all that useful myself. I have it on some of my other scopes. I never use it. They have features like this that I do use though. Let me set the thing up for XY mode and have a look at that. So here we go in XY mode. It's, it's nice, looks good. What I got going into it now is 1000 Hertz on channel two and 1001 Hertz on channel one. So let me uh, turn channel one here up to two kilohertz, three kilohertz, four kilohertz. Now we'll go back down to the there and let's uh, see what happens when we go on channel two. And we put that up to two kilohertz, three kilohertz, four kilohertz, and so on. So yeah, it seems to be doing the job it's supposed to do. Got another nice feature in here, and that's the capture feature. So let's uh, let's pop back out of here, and we'll just get a simple waveform up on the screen. See, there's the waveform that we're looking at in XY mode. And I want to get a more interesting waveform up here, so let me set up for that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to probe this little homebrew computer here. And we're going to probe around the data lines, and then we're going to we're going to do a capture on that. So we'll do a single on that, and then we'll bring up the capture mode. Now what this allowed me to do, I've got a couple of cursors here, and I can capture that waveform, or any part of that waveform. So if I go in here, I can, uh, if I want to spread that out a little bit, and let's say I want to capture it from here to here. Now you just press this little disk here, and that'll capture it. Now let's go in and see what that looks like. So now we go into the browser, we go down to captured waveforms, and we can see I've got a couple of them there, sinusoid along, we have this one. And uh, when we get to the function generator, I'll show you what that means. All right, uh, so there's, that's the capture feature. So what you're doing is actually capturing a waveform, and you have access to these waveforms too. So when uh, you connect this up to a PC, you can actually extract those waveforms. So let's uh, return. Let's go into the measurements, uh, show you how they're done. So if you go in here, you just click on measure and you can just add measurements all you want. You know, so you can, if you want those measurements or whatever, it's really easy to do. Now, one of the things I, I, I think I mentioned in the last video, it doesn't have a, a measurement for rise time. I think that is also something a scope like this should have. I have less expensive scopes than this and they do have that capability of measuring rise time. It's a very important thing to be able to measure. Again, if Fernice are listening to this, or the developer can have a look at this video, please put that in if you can, that'd be very handy. So if we go into acquisition, you can see this here, it says six bit, nine bit, 10, and it goes up to 16. It's not real 16 bit, like you're not putting into place a 16 bit DAC in there or anything like that. The only way you can get this 16 bit is by doing some sort of averaging. Now it is effective for some signals. Let me actually try to bring that up and show that to you. Okay, what I've got on here now is this little gizmo here. It's a fast rise time pulsar. So putting in a signal of about 10 megahertz, as you can see here, but the rise time coming out of this thing is less than 40 picoseconds. So it's causing a very sharp spike in, in the oscilloscope, and that's to be expected. Let's look and see what that uh, acquisition mode can do for you. So if we want to kind of tone that spike down a little bit and get it closer, that's what it does for you. I could be wrong, but I think this is just some sort of averaging. But it's useful. It provides a, a fairly decent result. Okay, I want to try and put the same signal into both channels to see, try and compare the, the channels together. Okay, so I've got a... 60 megahertz sine wave going in here and I've got exactly the same one going into both things just coming through here the T goes into channel one then it loops around here comes back in here through the terminator into channel two and uh, let's have a closer look at all this uh, we're seeing a, a big phase change there between channel one and channel two that's uh that's rather severe let's have a look here with the cursors to see if we can get an idea of what that phase lag is So yeah, we're looking at about six and a half nanoseconds or more, maybe a little bit less than that. Let me put this on slow move and tuck this one in a little bit more. 
Come on. Okay. So 6.3 nanoseconds. Okay. Uh, so it, it probably a lot better at a lower frequency. At 6.3 nanoseconds, is not going to matter quite so much. Now let me uh, let me get rid of those. Let's bring up some measurements on the second channel here, and they're both measuring 60 megahertz as we expect. They're quite a bit different in voltage though. Eh? 800 millivolts versus 723 millivolts. Hmm. Let's see it at a lower frequency. Okay. Well, here we are at, at 10 megahertz, and it's it's not quite so bad. I'm going to turn on another generator here. I want to get it up into the couple of hundred megahertz and see how it works up in there. There's still a big discrepancy between, like they, they should be measuring exactly the same. Get them centered on each other, yeah. And we can see now that the, the phase relationship has actually changed a little bit. We've got uh, channel two is leading channel one at this point. Interesting. So they're, they're both at the same attenuation level here. Okay. Okay, let me get a scope up on the screen for you. All right, so what do we have here? We have uh, the generators outputting one megahertz sine wave at one volt peak to peak, uh, no offset, and a duty cycle of 35 point. I guess that doesn't matter for sine waves. What are we getting up on the screen there? We're getting one volt peak to peak, and we're getting one megahertz. That's pretty good. Okay, let's see what uh, different waveforms they have here. So we got square, and that's going to matter what our duty cycle is. So let's go in there and adjust the duty cycle to 50%. That's a pretty good looking square wave. Let's bring up the frequency there to, let's bring it up to five megahertz. Still looking pretty good. Let's bring it up as high as it will go. Is it, will it go up to 20 megahertz? No, it'll only go up to 10. And it's still pretty good. It's not too bad. You know, if you're a square wave aficionado, it's probably not going to suit you. But if you just want to get a square wave into something as a clock, this would probably suit most things. Let's get a, a reading on the rise time here. Okay, rise time 15 nanoseconds. Okay, what's the next one here? We got a triangle. Pretty good. We're up at the kind of the upper limit of these. This is a limited to five megahertz here. Uh, sawtooth. It's got a little bit of a wonkiness down at the bottom here. But if we bring it down to something reasonable, looking pretty good. Okay, next we have another sawtooth. That's going the other way. Step function. Half wave rectification full wave rectification, exponent, a ringing signal, let me adjust my trigger there, square root function, multi-sign, sync, DC, so you can just set a DC voltage there if you want, and put in an offset of 5 volts, yeah, there we go. We're at uh, one volt per division there. So it's giving us two and a half volts. And that's the most offset that you get. So that's good, that's, that's good. Let's now go on here, this other one. This here is the capture. So we chose that capture. That's the capture that we created here. Give it some amplitude, a volt or so. So let me give it a little bit more amplitude here and we'll do a single shot on it. Bring it in here like this. And there we go. So that's pretty much exactly the waveform that we recorded. It's a little bit smoother. That's kind of the equivalent of having a arbitrary waveform generator. So you can, if you can capture the waveform on your oscilloscope, then you can put it into the generator and generate it. Now I wonder what frequency it'll generate that up to. Now three megahertz is the most that'll do. So we'll get a single shot on that again. And there you go. Of course, it's going to smooth it out a little bit more at that frequency, but that's okay. That's a really handy feature. I like that. So if you wanted to feed that into a digital circuit, you'd probably want that offset. So here at one volt peak to peak, and we probably put in a, a, an offset of about 0.5 volts here. And uh, do a one shot on it again. 
Nice. That's doing pretty good. The generator in this thing is very nice indeed. So they did a good job on that. All right, folks. That's it for today. So in the next video in this series, I think it'll be the last one, we're going to have a look at the frequency response analyzer and the spectrum analyzer. And that should wrap up this series. And uh, I don't know if that's going to be exactly the next video or maybe the video after that. We'll see how things go. Thank you very much for coming out. And we'll see you in the next video. I do. Bye-bye.